It's a fact we would all like to believe that when an additive says includes all major, minor, and trace elements, that it's perfect and uptake perfectly matches replenishment. That, of course, is impossible, and the additive producers will be the first to acknowledge that. A major, minor, and trace element additive cannot and never will be perfectly matched to our systems. Formulating an additive system where major, minor, and trace elements are all in balance with uptake is more a game of averages than precision. Here's the challenge. Corals uptake trace elements, iodine, fluorine, bromine, lithium, vanadium, molybdenum, strontium, barium, ion, manganese, copper, nickel, chrome, cobalt, boron, and a laundry list of other elements. Some used for the production of skeleton, some utilized for cellular or metabolic functions within the coral's tissue are utilized by the zooxanthellae. So it seemed like replacing these elements is wise, and it probably is, but there's a pollutionary risk when it goes wrong. That's because every single coral calcifying and non-calcifying organism, including various algae, are going to uptake many of these elements differently. The same corals may even do it differently if moved to a new tank with different environmental parameters. There's no way to thread the needle here and make an additive system that addresses all organisms in all tanks perfectly. The goal is always to just get close, but we can account for the realities of imperfection. What happens when the one-size-fits-all approach to elements results in too much of a good thing? Corals are not utilizing some of these elements as fast as they're being added, and they start rising beyond beneficial levels. This is when trace elements fit that definition of pollution, a substance that has harmful or poisonous effects in sufficient quantities. The net effect of this is the same as the impurity conversation. A single dose of a less than perfectly formulated two-part will never be an issue, likely not even 100. It's the unmitigated hundreds to several hundreds over a year or two that build up. Basically, all of the additive systems out there are designed around and expect or require some amount of dilution or water changes to account for the otherwise inevitable drifts. The biggest difference amongst them is size, frequency, or if the water changes are designed to prevent chemistry challenges or catch them with testing and then react to them after the fact. Okay, so again, acknowledging this is a high probability challenge, why isn't it a bigger issue for reefers? First, it's very likely that many reefers have experienced stress corals or even mortalities related to overdosing trace elements, but have not accurately diagnosed that as the cause. That'd be a pretty advanced move. Second reason is very few reefers use ICP testing to identify trends, even if it was only once a year, to see the results of a year's efforts, where it landed and how it was different. Most of the contaminants ICP test kit will show related to food, tap water, and additive inputs throughout the year. The big question in all this is who has the best approach to formulating trace elements in their additives? We'll have a full video on all the popular approaches in the future, but for this video, I'll share this is one of the reasons why we're running Triton Core 7 on the tanks in 52 SE. Most of the added producers have shared with me why they believe their additive is the best. There is a bit of a trust leap, but while most are different, they all seem to be fairly logical. However, there is one mentality or approach that stuck out from the pack for me. Triton CEO told me the reason that he knows theirs is formulated better than others is because they're not just an additive company, but also a testing company. What's unique about them is their customers who use the Core 7 send in hundreds of thousands of ICP test kits, which includes data on exactly how well the additive as well as others are working on the tank. When anomalies arise, they can reach out for clarifying questions. This provides the opportunity for data back continual performance improvements and threading the needle of working the best for not everyone, but for the absolute most people. How much this helps is a reasonable question, but it was a mentality that resonated with me as having the highest degree of success or likelihood of anything I'd heard to date. Support of that Core 7 workout great on the BRS360 for us. Core 7 formula addresses the fact that all these tanks utilize elements differently than the average tank because they have refugiums. In the end, logic, personal experience, and testing land on what I believe to be best for these tanks. For those of you that don't have a fuge, they do have in other methods. However, for anyone who understands the full Triton system already, there's an obvious question. Isn't the Triton method founded upon minimal water changes, only performing them when regular ICP testing suggests the need and then dosing some individual elements when the report suggests it? The answer is yes, and if this is your first attempt with something new, I'd suggest following that recipe as close as you can and see what it produces. We did that with the BRS360 for a long time and it worked great, as long as we sent in those kits and did what the report said. However, not surprising, on a test-based reactionary system, if we didn't send in the kits or dose what it said, the tank went south. There's a method to the madness, and it worked. However, once you've made a few cakes, you can change things with predictable results. In the end, well, the testing and little bottles was fun. It was too mad scientists for me, and was more work than just doing the regular preventative water changes. After a while, we switched things up, kept the Core 7, but moved to regular water change schedule and stopped most of the individual bottle dosing. Net result is some elements were slightly depleted, but nothing material or seemed to affect success. We also never had toxic or elevated elements from the additive. 
The tank thrived off the consistency of Core 7 coupled with the regular water changes. Sometimes the best results come from adapting the tools to your needs or situation, but knowing how that tool works first produces the best results. There's another challenge with elements, not calcium hydroxide or calcium formate or even calcium reactor, but with all two parts. That's pollutive levels of sodium chloride. 